All right. Well, I think we're going to go ahead and get going. Um, my name is Stephen Bowles with Showflow. Just super pumped and excited to be here with you all today. And um, we're downtown Orlando, so if you hear fire trucks and stuff like that go by, eh, I, don't know, I can't do much about it, but uh, we'll try to mute ourselves where possible. I am joined today by two amazing, lovely ladies, uh, Miss Jessie Powell and Nikki Sim. Um, Jessie's with the Braves, and uh, she's been using Showflow for two years now, Jessie. Is that what it is? Okay, yeah, and you're muted, by the way. That's okay. Uh, and then Nikki, uh, they just completed their first season and are, you know, so they're just really good kind of splattering, obviously, uh, with the Salt Lake Bees. You got more of the minor league and Braves with the major league. So it's just exactly what we wanted. We wanted this to be a very baseball-specific um, instructional, uh, just kind of how these teams are using show flow to build game scripts. So uh, just on the front end, I shared it with these, uh, with Jesse and Nick. We're not here to sell show flow today. That's not kind of the concept. It's all about game scripting and workflow. Uh, it just happens to be that show flow is in the backbone. So as you have questions, uh, feel free to hit, uh, use the little questions chat thing on the side. I've got one of our guys, John Alexander is one of our product specialists. He's with me on my end and we'll be capturing questions and we'll be doing polls along the way. Uh, and so as you have those questions, we'll queue them up and then we'll deliver them. But just a, an outline of what we're doing for the next give or take 30, 40 minutes. Um, we're going to do just a quick preview, uh, just a, like an overview of what, you know, what we're all talking about here, what, what show flow is. And then um, we're going to go to Jessie uh, and she's going to share her screen and she's going to literally just walk through how she builds game scripts inside of show flow and just uh, generally how the Braves go about the game scripting process. Uh, and then we'll have, as you have questions for her, use the, again, the questions in the comments in the chat and uh, we'll field those, queue them up. Uh, give them over to Jesse, let her answer, uh, and then we'll shift gears. And we'll go over to the beast and do it over there. So that's it. Uh, nothing too complex, but uh, really, really awesome. Just one more note: we will be recording this. Um, so just as you have, uh, you know, just just for you all to know, you're a part of something that's being recorded and uh, something that'll be rebroadcasted later. So with that, real quick, let me share my screen and let's get going. Um, real quick, just a, the highest level of overviews. If you haven't, you know, heard about it before. Uh, Showflow literally just helps teams build game scripts, right? Um, if you're previously using Excel, which pretty much everybody does, uh, maybe you're using Script Pro, um, you should take a look at it. And what you're going to see today is really the Braves and the Bees have really adopted it fully into their workflow. Um, and we just generally hear as a whole that it saves a bunch of time uh, at a minimum. Uh, you know, transparency creates accountability. And so moving to a system like Showflow will just really uh, give you and your team the ability to kind of uh, make those edits in one place, be seen across all your team members. And then obviously when you get live during the game, uh, there's some really powerful tools that come into play there with like show caller tracking and more. So again, I promised we weren't going to kind of really promote Showflow, but I wanted to make sure we had a base idea of what it is we're looking at here today um, before we kind of shifted gears and went and, and kind of saw how the Braves and others do it. Um, okay, I'm also going to quickly do a poll just because it's kind of fun and you can do those on webinars uh, and just really ask what, uh, I'm going to launch the poll here, you know, kind of what do you currently use for building game scripts, right? Excel, you know, Word, Script Pro, something else, just kind of go ahead and fill that in real quick for me and give us an idea so we know who we're talking with and kind of can tailor this webinar a little bit as we go. Cool. So it actually uh, came out. And let's see, I'm going to close the poll Boom. and share the results. So it looks like we've got uh, overwhelmingly like Script Pro or Word. Um, so that's awesome. That's good to hear, actually. So Word, obviously, for PA reads, things like that. Good amount of people are using Script Pro. So we can kind of see, um, you know, what it might look like in Showflow here today. So that's actually pretty cool. All right. Awesome. Well, thank you for doing that. And all right, let's kick it off. Before I jump directly into the Braves, I just want to kind of hear just a little bit and introduce these two uh, here to the other. So I'm going to start with Nikki. Uh, Nikki, if you want to go ahead and give yourself an unmute just to get ahead of this. Um, yeah, Nikki, just kind of tell me a little bit about kind of like who you are, your role at, at you know, at the Bees, uh, and then just kind of like overall, uh, you know, how did you guys find Showflow? Don't hear you yet. Let me find you real quick. Attendees, staff, I'm going to unmute you. Ready? All right, go ahead, go for it. All right, hi everyone. Um, like uh, like Stephen said, Showflow was uh, first for us this season. We previously previously used Excel and made a transition over to Showflow. It's been just a 
world one of a difference being able to have the live updates and just kind of everything all on one page for everyone we're not printing pages anymore and so it's just been a huge help but um i'm the game operations and marketing manager for the salt lake bees which is the triple a of the angels and um it's just been a really good transition and i'm writing all of the game scripts and everything for each game and it's saving us at least a bunch of time so it's kind of a background with us in show flow Cool, love it. And then Jesse, just kind of swinging over into you. I'll make sure you're unmuted ahead of time. Uh, same thing, just kind of like how, you know, what's your role over there and then just kind of how did Showflow come into y'all's world? Right, so I, my name is Jesse Powell. I'm the fan experience senior coordinator, coordinator for the Braves and work within our fan experience department under Scott Cunningham. And that involves broadcasting, production, promotion, and entertainment. So Showflow, we started in Excel and Word and transitioned over to Showflow to incorporate all of those different departments so that we can be on the same page throughout the games. It's certainly helped with my role of building games, the run of shows for all 81 games that we have, uh, writing scripts and being able to collaborate with my coworkers on that, and then in-game being able to make changes immediately that really impact our whole team. Cool. All right, so Jesse, just kind of like, yeah, a little bit of background on, or just kind of context around your current workflow, including show flow. Just when you even think about getting ready for a season, um, where do you start? How does that work, even just conversationally, internally, uh, before we get into screen sharing and really showing what show flow looks like? Just how do you, what's the philosophy and how did the Braves really approach this game scripting and game prez as a whole? Yeah. So. Uh, we really start now. Our season has wrapped up, and we start now thinking of different feature ideas, how to step it up a notch for next year, a lot of brainstorms, and thinking about what we want to do for our fans. Um, and that is really our focus, is what's going to be the most entertaining options for our fans from the time that they get out of their cars and come through our plaza in the battery to when they enter in before the game starts with, uh, BP and our pregame ceremonies, our on-deck show with our hosts, Mark Owens and Greer Carlson, and just getting excited about game starting, as well as all the in-between elements. So all of those are things that we activate and are in charge of. And for Showflow, we start with our Plaza show, and that's a whole, whole separate rundown of the entertainment we do in the battery with our heavy hitters, our drumline team, our dancers, and our tomahawk team. So we start there and then all of our features in game as well. Okay, so your plaza show, you're, that's basically like a during pregame or pre, okay, I got you. Yeah, as fans are coming in the gates, uh, it's something for them to enjoy out in our, and the battery is our, our mixed use development that's outside of the ballpark. So there are restaurants and shops and we want the Braves experience to start out there rather than yeah. just in the gates. And Showflow has helped a lot with that too. So, okay, so then, and before we jump into, this, into screen share of Showflow, in terms of the way an element even comes into an existence uh, at the Braves, you know, you've obviously got sponsorship to an extent. How is that, like, water falling down to your world where inevitably you put it into the into Showflow as an element? Right. So once we come up with those ideas in the off-season, we like to then take those ideas to our corporate partners yep. and try to best tie in those brands into the elements. And then at the beginning of the year, so this will be around March, we do a rehearsal where we take all of our elements, sponsored and unsponsored. There are some that we just love enough that we want to do in-game. Um, one of those was our Atlanta Braves All-Star Face Race. We had these giant big heads that were out in uh, the outfield, and they would pass those along sections, and whoever's big head made it won. Um, so those oh. are things that we really enjoyed that we just wanted to do for fun. So we take all those elements, and put them into a rehearsal script for our production team and our camera guys. Yep. And just depending on our sponsorship, whether it's 40, 81, 27, so every third game, half a season, full season, or some combination of those, hmm. uh, we then plug those into our global elements. And so those are things that we can pull um, into what I'll show you guys is our template. Um, okay. Well, yeah, let me do that. Then. So let's let's switch gears because that's it. I mean, I, at this point, I want to just see what you're talking about. This is going to be fun. 
All right, so yes. I'm going to share with you real quick, uh, presenter. Take me one second. And Jesse found you. Awesome. All right, so Jesse, when you get a chance, go ahead and share your screen. And let's just start right there. Yeah, like, and, and then a little bit of context. So Jesse's using one of our newer features called, uh, you know, Global Elements. So this is something that really, uh, in response to sports as a whole, baseball specifically, and then honestly, even like Scripper before, you know, which we're really proud and excited to bring those customers over into Showflow now with the acquisition this year. Um, but when we were really, you know, trying to figure out how to bridge that, um, we, we realized that we needed to have an answer for the well. Uh, and so that's what Global Elements is. And so the Braves use it. Uh, the bees haven't yet uh, introduced it into their workflow. So that'll be nice today to kind of see both, actually. So go ahead, Jesse, walk us through that. Great. So can you see that all right? I sure do. Perfect. So um, these are our upcoming events. As you can see, we have a low supply there. We don't have any coming up. But what we have here are our templates. And so this is the skeleton of every game that we have. And we base them off of our times for our games. So that applies to our BP times as well as our start time, which Showflow is incredible with. So what I'll do is I'll go to this 735 template and go into our games. Um, and we'll just switch over to here. This is what the template looks like. And so there are things that we have every game that we know we are going to use. Um, this gate open, we put in the visiting team and the times that they're open. We've got all of our BP times as well as our broadcasters. And this is our on deck show, our pregame show. And Steven, just stop me when, if there's something that you want me to highlight. You're but killing you see, it. Keep going. TBD times, we will plug in with spots, kind of like commercial breaks, um, as well as the green or things that we do, um, what we call our pregame features which is when we take our host career out around the battery or inside the ballpark to film spots for people to see, fans to see what we have going on. Um, once we get into our pregame, we've got our welcome announcements, our welcome warning. Um, our Tomahawk team comes out and shoots T-shirts. And so... <laughs> Scott a call. Like, where yeah. are you, <laughs> so, um, we've got our first ball, our military recognition, our anthem. So those are in our pregame. Those happen every week um, or every game, I should say. And then as we get into the game itself, so we have our play ball where we start off the game with a fan and then we have our first pitch. We go into our end game. Um, so you'll see here we've split everything up in our skeleton by innings. Um, mid first, we'll always have, for the most part, we've put in our ceremonial tomahawk chop which is a staple of the Braves, something that we enjoy. And so for this, it's the first Tomahawk chop of the game, and we'll try to bring in well-known people from around Atlanta or Braves country um, and just let them come start the chop with the fans. And then, as you can see, we've got music fills, but this is where we plug in all of our elements. But instead of just starting from scratch or copying a game and having to delete things and bring them back in, I will just duplicate this, and it's really easy to pull our elements in. So, so Jesse, let me, let, me, let me pause you right there real quick. So this is helpful. And real quick, let me give a little bit of context for people who are seeing Showflow for the first time here. So yeah. she's in what we call uh, a show, but really, I mean, it's a game log or a game script. Um, and so these are her elements, and, you know, you would – one for one, think of that more as like Excel. And I think from the poll, there's a good amount of Script Pro people. So um, these are these are this is a schedule in Script Pro conversation. Jesse is in what you call the light theme, um, which is yeah. awesome that it's available. Uh, you can be in what we call the dark theme, um, which is a little bit more like I think the default look uh, at Showflow. So uh, just FYI, that's what you're looking at. There's kind of a difference between the two. And then she's got a bunch of elements uh, with global highlights, and she's using those to kind of visually indicate things. Oh, man, you're getting a fire truck bad right now, aren't you? Um, and then uh, finally, I just wanted to say that, yeah, so she had already built this script, and then now she's going to – I think you're going to show us, Jesse, a little bit like global elements, how do you add stuff, or what, what were you going to do next, actually? Yeah, so what I'll do is then switch over to a completed game that we have, and I can show everyone how we pull in elements. So what you'll see here is – 
exactly the same thing with all of the elements tied in. So our pregame show has all of our spots, what we want to highlight with interviews in the game. Our pregame stays the same, but on this day, this was um, our breast cancer awareness day. So I pulled in an on-field presentation and a video. We wrote script, and I split this with Scott. So I will write something, and he'll edit it, or we'll split roles, and he'll write a script, and I'll write a script. Um, and so th that is what is really helpful for this, is I was able to put in what I thought should be said, and he can adjust accordingly. And we'll do that up until the day of the game. Um, and real then, quick, Jess, is, if you don't mind, real quick. So talk about that. So in terms of editing and show flow, who all's got who all from your team kind of is editing and contributing leading up to the show? To yeah. The game? So Scott and I are the main contributors, and just depending on what we have going on, there are some presentations that we do every year, and so we kind of have an idea of what we want to do. That's the same for Breast Cancer Awareness Day. That's something where we want to honor survivors every year. And so we adjust our presentations a little bit every year uh, just to mix it up. But for the most part, I know what is needed to be done for that. And I'll write a script, copy and paste it in, and then let him know when it's in there. Um, there are some days like opening day uh, that he's really involved with. And so he will um, assign out scripts, and that'll be myself. Um, or he'll really have an idea of what he wants to do. And so he'll just go right in and type it right into the script column. Gotcha. So in terms of like users, uh, that's kind of like it's you and Scott and you're basically kind of the, the initial drafter of most everything and or taking notes from emails or text messages in the middle of the night and plopping them in there. But then also Scott, he can go directly in there and make an edit. Talk to me about just kind of like when those happen. I mean, how do you and Scott communicate with each other that an edit's been made? You know, do you have a workflow around that? So for scripting, um, it can work a number of ways. So um, I can write one up and print it out and he can edit it right in front of him. But often what we'll do is I'll write a script and just our desk, his office is right outside or my desk is right outside of his office. And so most of the time it's just like, hey, Scott, that script's done. So it's great and pulls it right up. Uh, or right. we have a pre-production meeting on game days. And mm -hmm. a lot of the times we'll pull it up right there. And yep. so if we have a 7.30 game, we have a one o'clock meeting and we'll be going through the game and he'll read the script and make edits right then and there. Yep, gotcha. Okay. And then, so you were, uh, I think, queuing up to just kind of talk a little bit more about like inserting an element, if you were, from like a global element perspective. How would how would you go about doing something like that? Yeah. So once we get through all the elements that we normally have, I'll say too, you can see here where there were blanks before for mm -hmm. our honorary team captains or our play ball. I just go in and, and put those names in. Um, and there are really easy ways that you guys have taught me how to do that as far as putting in visitor, visiting team and replacing that with the actual team name. Um, or writing a whole script and just typing in the blanks. So once I know who is participating, we fill those things in, but they're already waiting there for me. Gotcha. Uh, now you can see that there, it looks a lot different here. We've still got our ceremonial tomahawk chop with a name added in. But then as we go through, you can see there are elements in each of these inning breaks, depending on the sponsorship needs that we need to fill and what we think is going to make a really great game experience. And how we do that is through global elements, what we need done. So if you click on the globe over here, everything that I've added in as a global element, uh, basically I do a one time thing and it's got all of the elements. So for Delta quarter minute to win it, I've typed in what we need for our video and audio, mm -hmm. uh, all of our LED boards here, the script, and then notes and pricing I usually add in later. But um, I'll come in here and these are all of our elements. So anything that I can pull from, and you can see I've tagged them either as a sponsorship item, those internal things that we just enjoy doing ourselves that we think makes a better game experience, and then some unassigned, these are go for our rain delays and things like that. But um, I can go ahead and pull over. I'll also say here on the left is the whole game, which mm -hmm. is really nice, uh, just to be able to come in and pull what you need. So. 
I'll re pull in delta quarter minute to win it. Add that in, and you can see all the elements come up exactly how we need them done. Yep. It's awesome. And that's what I do for the whole game. So now I just drag and drop. Uh, all of our games are different. They no game is the same. Mm -hmm. And so this makes it very easy to switch up innings, switch up elements, and make each game unique, which is what we're looking for. So a question on that. When you, and, and also just for context for anyone looking at, so global elements, the idea there would be you build, you're building the element really one time at, at, at really a, a parent level above any one of your game scripts. And yeah. then uh, as you need, you're inserting it in. And if you were to make changes, have you ever had a situation where you, you make a change to that element in one game and you go, hey, I think I like the way I just did that. I'd like to make this the new standard. Do you, have you guys run into that yet or no? Yes. Okay, yeah. Cool. So, um, that was the case, especially at the beginning of the year when we have new elements yep. and maybe want to adjust the script a little bit. Um, or we actually add a sponsor. So for this, when we started and in our rehearsal, it was just a family feud. Um, mm -hmm not presented by anybody, but Coors Light picked it up because it was a new idea and they thought it fit what they wanted to do. But if we wanted to go back to it being unsponsored, then we would fix it, go to our global elements, and we could publish it to the global elements manager or publish everywhere. And there have been a time when we've done both, where we've come up with a new idea, played it out, it worked out well, so we added it to our global elements manager. Or it was something that we adjusted either a script or naming rights, something like that. And so we publish that everywhere and it would go to every current game that we have. Makes sense. And I mean, and for baseball in particular, I mean, y'all just have so many dang games. So, yeah, you know, games. and then, yeah, actually I'd love to hear that too. Now that I just think about it, like, you know, editing when you're in kind of like a home stand stretch of like, I don't know, six or seven games, how are, how are you and Scott doing that? Like, how do you, work on one script and on uh, Tuesday and Thursday and next Tuesdays all at the same time. And right. how do you, yeah, just talk about that a little bit. Cause I mean, I think every team, regardless if you're in Excel or show floor script pro, that's a reality. So just how, do, yeah. how does the brand handle that? Well, and I'll tell you this too, Steven, that six or seven is a pretty good homestand. You oh, know, yeah. six games is pretty easy. Uh, yeah. It's the 10 and 11 game homestands that really, really get you. Um, oh, for the long ones. But uh, I'll say that, we really try to prepare in advance for the week that we have off before those. I usually make rundowns, try to have them all finished definitely before the homestand begins and then try to work ahead to the next set of games, the next homestand. Um, but there are times when we'll start a homestand and the first six games are good script wise, but there are some presentations that we're still working on. And we really work before and after games a lot of the time. Um, so say we've got a big presentation on Friday or a concert on Saturday and we're starting games on a Monday. Uh, we'll work Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday mornings on scripts and writing those things if they're not ready. And we'll go back and forth. So I may write something and then Scott will, uh, edit and then the next day we'll kind of check in with each other but we've got a good balance of communicating that's a big part you know is writing a script and then letting him know and he's good to keep on me about that cool um just kind of some summary thoughts i mean talk to me about how uh just live like in game how, how do the how does, how does show flow translate from more of like this is the place that we're making edits and changes and prepping it for the gate and then game day itself, printouts, right. who's getting printouts, who's yeah. got devices. Just talk about that a little bit. So after our pre-production meeting, we have our production meeting with our game day staff, which is our production team, our camera guys, the guys that run our LEDs, video, they're all in one room going over this. And um, so we do printouts for, our handhelds there are two of those and we'll do printouts for some people that are working on the field the entertainment team which is um, on our team is Jeffrey Camille Sarah and myself we're kind of on the ground on headset for our production team 
So we will take those printouts, but for the most part in the control room, they all have monitors where they can keep up with show flow. And you can see here, I'm tracking our, our producer for the games, Matt, and they will follow that game. We also have a big monitor up front for our TD to watch and for anyone else in the control room just to keep up with the game where we are, as well as our PA announcer. So they're all on show flow electronically on devices, as well as our hard cameras. They all have iPads. And I think it's easier for them to follow because if they're tracking Matt, they don't have to look on a piece of paper of where they're trying to keep up, what inning is it. They can look and see what's highlighted. So we kind of split a little bit. Probably a third of us are on hard copies and the rest are electronic. Makes sense. And we hear that a lot. I mean, I think that's important to, to note just for anyone who's thinking about it. Like, you know, you, you don't have to go all in on show flow. You can, you can actually just use it as a scripting tool uh, and get it printed out just fine. And it's as expected. Would you say, Jesse, the team that gets the printouts, are they kind of like, what is this? This doesn't look normal. Or would you say it kind of is, it meets what their basic expectations would be around a game script printout? Yeah. And I'd say over the past two years, it's definitely, you guys have taken it up a notch to where it's real clean cut and we can, yeah. we can uh, customize it the way we want it to look. So you'll see mine and the colors will look different than Nikki's and we do it based off of what we can keep up with. Yeah. And then, you know, uh, stage managers, we don't need to know about the LEDs or the audio needs. And so oftentimes we will close those out. So all we can see is the elements and what's seen on the board and the script. Yeah. And that makes it really clear for us too. So that's really helpful. I'll yeah, say too, I don't know if you, um, I mean, the biggest thing for Showflow for us is in baseball, there's a lot of rain delays if you don't have a roof. And so between adjusting times for rain delays or rain outs, being able to add in scripts there, that's really helpful. And then we'll have a lot of presentations where there are seven people being named or 20 people being named, but by the time it starts, five of those people couldn't make it or there are a couple name changes and we can make those edits on the spot just by calling them up on our headset. Yep. Hey, so we've got a question, and just a reminder for anyone who's watching and viewing, if you've got any questions, you can send them in, and we keep them anonymous, no worries, and, uh, but yeah, send, up, send in questions. So we've got one from, uh, let's see, how do you handle changes made on the fly with communicating with people utilizing printout scripts? It's a fair yeah. question. You've, met, you've moved the script around a little bit in the digital side, but you've got a printout that's, you know, now not necessarily reflective of the current uh, so how do you handle that, Jesse? Can you speak to that? Yeah, so I'll say there are a couple of ways that are helpful for us. One is that all of our stage managers are on headsets. And so adjusting those scripts, we're usually the ones doing that and calling it up. Um, and so we can make those edits handheld, you know, on our own, on a paper printout. Um, but it also helps that our producer is really involved. And so he kind of keeps us on track as far as changing the scripts. Um, and so on the fly, if we're changing a script, we just call it up on headset and they, and they will make the edit for everyone else to see. Um, so that's really helpful. Uh, for most people changing names on the board for a lower third, she's on headset. So she'll be able to do that immediately as we call it up. Mm -hmm. and our producer will keep us on it. But um, as far as making changes and then having to go reprint, the people that really need those edits are not on hard copies. Mm. And so they get the automatic update. That's our PA announcer who's reading the script, our producer, and the person that's writing our lower thirds. That was going to be one of my follow up questions is does y'all's PA uh, announcer use Showflow digitally and have printouts as well? Yes, yeah, so we'll, we have a printout for him, but he has a monitor right in front of him that updates automatically. Gotcha. And we talked about this in the feature view. He will go um, here, and let's see if I can get there for him. Um, if not, we'll switch back to our template. But basically, this view will just show the script. And so, oh, cool. yeah. Uh, which, 
is nice for him because he doesn't have to follow with anything and he can read right off of this. Let's see here. There you go. Yep. And then just there like, we go. Mm. So this is a view for our PA announcer that he uses and he can read right off of the screen without having to worry about anything else going on. And if he's tracking Matt, then Matt will move the elements uh, and he can just read what's right in front of him. So he's not even having to worry about necessarily scrolling or changing screens or clicking down himself for the, for the view. Um, if he needs to look ahead, he can do that. But yep. as Matt tracks it, our PA announcer is there to read what's in front of him. So that makes it really simple too. That's a really great reminder that, I mean, that basically, you know, we're always working on the software, making it better. One of the things we really built out for sports is this kind of featured view. We call it featured view. It's more of like, it's, it's all about featuring one particular column. And in this case, you know, for a PA announcer, that's a great example where it's really taking a, a larger part of your screen and placing your script in there um, and then allowing for, uh, and then really it's hard to show it on this webinar, but just the tracking functionality in general really comes alive during the live, uh, during the game. And that's basically where as Scott or Jesse advances throughout the game um, from element to element, these devices are just, you know, scrolling up automatically right there. So that's a lot of flexibility. Um, I do have another question and then I want to uh, make sure we shift over a little bit over for Nikki, um, but real quick, how do you build a template, a template, like a different start of game times, like mm -hmm. the different start of game times? Okay, cool. Yeah. So how do you, how do you start a new game or how do you, how do you build a template? Uh, maybe where one is, you know, more of an afternoon game and one's more of an evening game. I'm sorry, right. Leaving, but That's basic based on times. There isn't a lot of difference in the templates, but okay. I do at the beginning of every year. And this may change because this past year was when I made the templates to fit global elements. Mm. Uh, so before, as you know, I had a different kind of template, but global elements has really helped me to pare that down to just the bare bones of what we need for each game. But you can see here, I have a template for our 735 games. That was weekday games. So a Monday through Friday game, um, 710 or the 410 game. Those were for Saturdays, and then the 135 was for Sundays. And so, so the oh, go difference ahead. in these uh, is the batting practice times. Yeah. Um, and then the start time of the game. And yeah. that's another huge benefit is that when we can back time all of those times as we add things in. But it helps for them to all be kind of around the similar time rather than having one template and having to adjust every game from a 7.35 game to a 1.35 game or 7.35 to a 7.10, uh, which really the times, because baseball, you don't know how long the game is gonna last once it starts. Yeah, Those yeah. times apply really for our on-deck show and our pregame before first pitch. Okay. So, but I created, I think the 7.35 game first. I put in all of the times with the inning breaks, and then I duplicated the 7.35 to the 710, 410, and then duplicated 735 again to make the 135. Gotcha. But once yeah, I've I think made that, them, I keep them. I think that that's, uh, that's, I think that's a great example right there, Jess, of uh, the answer to the question that we do get a lot from anyone uh, who's used to the Script Pro workflow, because Script Pro workflow uh, is really helpful in baseball, and I get it, um, but it's this idea that you can go ahead and pre-create the Thursday template and then every Thursday, anytime you create a game, it's, you know, it's just going to load it that way, which is, uh, it is unique functionality that you don't directly do one for one in Showflow, but it's the concept of what Script Pro is doing in Showflow is really the same thing at the end of the day, which is just creating from a template. Um, and so this, in this, this is how Jesse would have solved the same problem and how we would encourage any Script Pro customer to come in over to do that, which would be, you would just create three or four schedules uh, in Script Pro terms and then just start with a duplication there and then and then go off uh, from that as a starting point. Uh, one more, uh, Jesse, real quick, and then I'm going to, uh, just for sake of time, switch us around. Uh, I'm gonna answer this next one, uh, which is, 
Are you able to schedule elements ahead of time so they automatically load in specific game scripts? That's really the same concept of what I was just talking about, but I understand that and just knowing that we have a larger script pro audience on this. Um, totally get it. And it's a it, that's a type of functionality that is a script pro thing in terms of a workflow to where you can like when you're building a specific element, uh, just go ahead and say, I want this always in Thursdays or every other, you know, on, on weekdays or whatever it might be. Um, so no, that is not a one for one in Showflow. You can using global elements really kind of tag a lot of things and, and quickly um, sort of, you know, get down to a filtration of, of your well, quote unquote, uh, and build one real quick. Um, but for the most part, uh, in terms of pre-scheduling elements, that's not something that's a one-for-one -one switch when switching over to Showflow. And then the last one is, can you show how the template is made in the software? Uh, oh, and that's really, she's doing a follow-up that she goes, can you show how the template's made in the software is really what more of what I meant. So I think at that point, Jesse, uh, if you would just duplicate one of those uh, and let everybody see that. So um, I'll go to my Teams. Yep. And while we're here, you know, we've got our upcoming events. So when I build a home stand or two, I really have a list, a page or two of games yep. um, that I'm working on all at the same time. But, the past events. Yes. So I pulled this, I duplicated this from our past events. And so you can see that every game that we've done in Showflow for the past two years, plus our trial the year before, is all still saved in here. Yeah. And that's really helpful to pull straight from Showflow Again, if we're doing breast cancer awareness and we want to remember what we did last year, we'll pull from that bank from and duplicate that to pull some elements from there. Yeah. Or opening day is a lot different than the rest of our regular games as far as the pregame is concerned. And so yeah. we'll duplicate our opening day and copy those elements over. But um, so say I have a 735 Monday game, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Uh, I'll go to the team view and come over here, and it's as simple as clicking this double page. And you know, say we were playing tomorrow, it would be 10, 24 versus you know whoever we play, and switch the dates, submit that, and it will copy and paste right into our upcoming events. You can see awesome. right there. Go in order of date. So I would do that if it was Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I'd duplicate that three more times and they would come just listed right above it. So awesome. That's how it's done. That's it. Well, Jesse, love it. And uh, we're going to stick around a couple minutes afterwards. So if anyone doesn't have a hard stop at two, then we'll, uh, you, we'll, we'll reopen this all up for questions for the Braves. But uh, I do want to shift over uh, air high five, by the way there, Jesse. Thank you. That's awesome. Um, boom. All right. So Nikki, it's your turn. Um, Nikki, I'm going to switch over presenters to you. Um, but Nikki's with the uh, Salt Lake Bees, and uh, just while I'm switching this over to you, if you don't mind, just kind of again reminding us a little bit about y'all's workflow. Who, you know, which your title, and then who are you working with on your team? Uh, yeah, kind of step us through some of that. Yeah. So just again, um, my name is Nikki Sim. I'm the game operations um, and marketing manager for the Salt Lake Bees. Um, I'm kind of the one mostly using Showflow. My boss, the director of marketing, um, Brady Brown, uses it too. But we, um, it's kind of just us two, the ones, you know, I'm 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 the one building the log and kind of same with what Jesse was saying. I'll let Brady know, hey, I've got a script in there. Do you want to look at it and make some edits? Um, so that's kind of the gist of it. Um, are you are you able to see my? Yep, game I got you. Okay, great. Okay. So I'll just go back up. So as far as building um, game to game, uh, the bees do it just a little bit differently. So instead of having a template for each time that we play, we um, more times than not, we'll just duplicate the past event because a lot of the times we have sponsorship elements that go every game or um, kind of every other game. And so it's just good to know okay, so that was, you know, yesterday's game. So it's next, you know, today's game doesn't have the same element, but a lot of similar ones. And with Showflow, it's so easy to change the times that if it's a 6.35 start tonight and a 7.05 start tomorrow morning or, you know, the next day, I can just put in the time at the very top and all of the times fix. So that's kind of how we do that. But can you kind of show time. that as an example real quick? Oh, yeah, uh, for sure. Just so people can see what it's like to edit time. 
Absolutely. So the very top of the log, let's see, we'll go here. So we've got like a, sorry. So gates open, pre real static boards. This little checkered flag with the arrow means that it's always going to start at that time. And so it won't change from there. So, but if we're going here and it's going to be a 6.15 p.m. start time. And we scroll down. Everything adjusts from there. So now that's 621, 621, 622, 622, 623. So it automatically just does that. And so we were Excel last year. So if we wanted to change the time on that, you'd have to go down and change every single cell. This just does it automatically. And then, you know, with the duration, that's what it goes off of. And then word to ceremonial first pitch is at 625. And you can change the duration. So if I have, like for this 4th of July game, we only had one first pitch. So that's typically around two minutes. If we've got more, which happens all the time when sponsorship sells more first pitches, let's say it's going to be five minutes. Then I'm going to scroll down once that goes. And now that's Zions Bank starting lineups are now at 6.30 instead of 6.27. So for us, it, I'm kind of just redoing the game prior because um, as much as we have going on a game day, I typically don't have time to do a whole homestand of game logs. So I'm really kind of after the game, I'm duplicating the past event and just filling in everything for the next day. And then as far as the bees, my our staff likes to have that emailed out that not like the night before the game so after the game i'm just filling in all of the new elements and then sending it over to all of our full-time staff love it all right yeah. so then talk just a little bit about kind of um just you and brady i mean that, that so that's the same sort of deal like how are you guys starting uh beginning of the season like where where do you start from do you build out sort of a a giant list of elements or a big template event or like kind of what's your workflow for building out the the beginning of a preseason? So um, like you all know, this was our first, you know, time using show flow for the season. So going into it, we really didn't know what to expect, but now for next year, we have a little bit more of a plan. So we have our, um, our on-field promotions and theme nights and everything we give to sponsorships. And once we kind of get, know what we're going to do, it's easier to kind of do, okay, you know, these are going to be this, like we have, RC Willie best seats in the house. We have a couch that fans can sit in for a whole game if they enter to win. So that's always going to be mid second. So we just know that's always going to be there. So we tell sponsorships that's always there. Um, and then, you know, just putting it into the log. Brady and I both know that that's where it's at. And so if I say, hey, if I need to make a change, you know, if our on field announcer can't get to, that then i'll say to our pa announcer hey i need you to announce this and i put it in under the column talent and script right now it says on field but it's just simple as making a change in the text box and then everyone gets it and brady and i are the show callers of show flow and if you guys don't know what that is it's just the main people that can basically do everything there's different tiers with different permissions but so let's just say like today's Winner is Brady Brown. Then I can just do that. And then um, everyone's on a headset as well. And I can just tell our PA announcer, hey, you know, I need you to announce best seats in the house. Everything's in there. And if he has any questions, he can let me know. Otherwise, he sees it immediately. And um, the really nice part is that we only print two copies for our DJs. Everyone else is on the screen. So I'll always let people know I made a change, but I'm never, um, I'm never like, hey, I need, I need you to announce Brady Brown as the winner. You know, B R A D Y Brown. I put it in there and just say, hey, everyone, just so you know, please look at R C Willie Best Seats in the House. There's the winner's name, um, and then everyone sees that screen. And the nice part with Show Flow is that it's mobile friendly, and so I'm sitting at the uh, our production room with my iPad or my laptop. And if I have to go run down and help with the promotion or help with, you know, a, you know, our honeybees or, you know, any of our interns need help, I just take my phone with me and I have my intern saying, hey, you know, section 12 is the winner of, you know, the Wendy's 
you know, Wendy's promotion, I can just go on my phone, put in section 12, same thing, radio up, hey, your section's ready, and we're good to go. So it's very friendly that way, and it's everyone's on the same page, and no one's ever, you know, in question. And if it's a last minute thing, it's just as easy as pulling my phone out, even if it's a simpler version, just saying, hey, section 12 is all that's in there. Everyone knows what section is the winning section. Yeah, you and I had chatted on the phone. I love this story you were sharing about kind of like your, your general manager last second uh, switching up one of your pitches or first pitch. Is that what it was? You, you got to share that story. Yeah. So um, we had a game and a ceremonial first pitch just hadn't showed up. And so we were five minutes away and I said, all right, they're out of here. We're not going to have them. And they we had other first pitches, though. And so our, our honeybee squad are walking them out. And our, my general manager runs on the field he goes she's here she's here and I'm like okay and I, I was like what's her name and title and he tells me and I'm like okay you know Jennifer go out and you're gonna be the last one to throw and I just added a line into the ceremonial first pitch put her name and title in and radio up said hey you know there's a new first pitch they had a lower third ready for her the PA announcer no one in the ballpark would have known that it in 10 seconds I had to put her name and everything and if we would have had excel i would have just said told my general manager you know sorry i don't know you know we'll have to do it later or we'll have to do something else for her there's no way i can do it that last minute and i mean he he turned over and said okay i think show flow is now worth it and i was like yeah it's always been worth it but it's just yeah, without you know without that live update i wouldn't have you know had time to do that and like i said every, no one in the ballpark knew you know, no fan in the ballpark knew that that was a last minute change. Which at the end of the day, that's what, you know, if mm -hmm. I like to say, if no one can tell that something crazy just happened backstage, exactly. then we all just did our job exactly right. You know, for everything from the yeah. control room to the producers to the tools. So. Mm -hmm. And I know Steven wanted me to kind of touch on this. So in our game logs, we actually have a column for our video and LED. So we're, you know, we're a minor league team. We only have one video board and one LED. Um, board and so our um, video board producer we send him the graphics and he actually puts this in on his own and so that way when we're going through if it's him he can hide a column and because he doesn't need to know what the text is and so he can just focus on you know the video at LED and so that's what the graphic needs to be up that when um, when that PA is being read or when it's that time they know it's you know, RC really best seats in the house. Then the next one is a kiss cam. So they start with this Chateau Deer Valley graphic and then it's a live shot of couples in the audience. And so this graphic has just been super useful because there's sometimes, again, I'm running around and I wanna make sure that the right graphic is up with the PA because things happen and sometimes it's not the right one. And so everyone just knows what graphic needs to be shown. And if it's not that graphic, we know instantly, like if it was, if they put fireworks tonight instead of the, you know, O'Reilly Triple O challenge, I can get on the radio and say, hey, wrong graphic, wrong graphic, please switch it. And within seconds, it's switched. And so that's something that we've really utilized. And it's just a simple JPEG that they put in of the video board graphic that we use for that PA. I love that. Yeah. And it's, uh, that's kind of like, I think one of the spirits of show flow is like transparency you know yep. like the more people that people can see um what it's supposed to be the more mm -hmm. you can have people going wait hold on i don't think i have that one loaded into my chiron or whatever it is exactly. and, you know so the more that you can get that information or and that's just that's right back down to like if you reorder an element or add something if it's a printout um you know mm -hmm. you, yep. they always have an excuse so like well that's not what it says here you know um, exactly. but when, you're, when you're moving in more, a little bit more of that kind of live environment in real time, then yep. it's always just, you know, it's right there. It's clearly, this is what we're doing, you know, kind of next. Mm -hmm. so. Exactly. Um, another uh, just note I wanted to mention, and uh, Nikki hit it, but yeah, so one thing you can do in Showflow is actually hide columns and reorder them uh, per user, right? Per logged in user. So your control room guys, who's a video graphics dude, he maybe doesn't need the PA read so he can, you know, reorder it and just see the items or the element name and then, and then the video and stuff. Same thing with, uh, your PA read. He might not want anything to do with graphics or video, but he needs to know what the audio, uh, technical note is. And mm -hmm. he also knows PA read. So that just that flexibility is kind of nice. Yep. Uh, yep. Our PA announcer hides every column except the item and the start time duration and then 
PA, talent script, everything else is hidden for him. And then, yeah, video board producers have everything hidden except the title, duration, and then video and LED. So, and it's it's great because it's personal to you. So if you made a change, it wouldn't affect everyone else's screen. It would only affect yours. And the private notes part's really cool too because if there's something that I just want to remember just for myself, like, mm -hmm. you know, don't forget to roll t-shirts, then no one else is going to see that, but I'm going to see it, which is going to remind me because I, you know, they're private notes. I don't need everyone else to read them. Yep. That's awesome. That's a good reminder. Yeah. Private notes is dedicated per user there. Mm -hmm. um, hey, so real quick, uh, your script is more colorful than Jesse's yes. script. <laughs> What's going on there? Uh, I, I love it. Um, I love it. It's beautiful. Yeah. But just talk to us about your thinking on colors and global highlights and all that. Yep. So we, um, it's a lot easier for everyone just to kind of know off the bat what um, each, you know, each element is as far as is it a tape? Is it a video? You know, is it a video with live cam? Is it just an on field promotion? And so we have the colors um, with the dark view. So anything in this pink right here that you can see is a tape. And we, we also put it in there as well. But when um, our video board producers are going through the log, they just know, OK, there's three tapes in a row we need to be prepared for. We use the light gray just as a title, just to offset with all the dark colors. Um, and then we use this like mint green for anything out of the ordinary. And so, like I said, this is our 4th of July game. And so we don't have doves and an eagle at every single game. And so when everyone sees this little light green, they know, oh, this is something we don't do every single day. So, you know, pay more attention to that. Um, and then as we get into the game, the yellow is a music buffer. So I've got, you know, we've got about 90 seconds between each inning that we can play with. And so this is only, you know, 15, 15, and 20. And then we've got, you know, some empty space to fill. And so that's just for our DJs. It's bright yellow. You know, play it, you know, if we have a theme, if it's 90s night, they know to play 90s music. But so yellow is just a music buffer. And then this kind of red salmon color is for on-field promotions. And so... Anytime there's a promotion on the field that, you know, our MC and our, you know, our game day staff are in charge of, they know that this salmon color is an on-field. And then this blue, like I said, is a, like a kiss cam. We have kiss cam, Simba cam, dance cam, anything that's blue, they know that, okay, there is a PA, but then following the PA, the video board crew needs to know to put a graphic up and then the live shots of, you know, parents holding up their kids or, you know, couples kissing. Love it. Yeah, um, so that's the, those are the gist of our colors. Gotcha. Now, are you, uh, Nikki, using Guest Pass at all, or are you sharing this with people kind of outside of you and Brady? So our video board crew, I just have a part of our event crew. So when you're building a log, you can go to crew and add people. You each add their email, and they just create a Showflow account. Um, let's see if I can go to that. So... Oh, there you go. Yeah. Yep. So everyone here has access to the game log. And as you can see, there's these permissions right here. So mm -hmm. we have, so Mark Thompson is our main producer. He's the one putting in the graphics for the um, video board column. He's the one making all of our commercials, making all of our graphic content. And so he's an admin. So I want him to have the availability to move columns around or change things, you know, Halfway through the year, they told me they wanted the video board to be before the LED because I had it reversed. And I said, yeah, that's great. You know, go ahead and do that. And then Jerry is another one of our producers. Um, but then as you go down, like Sean Brown, Dan Armstrong, these are people that are just using the um, log as far as they need to just know what's going on. And so they're all read onlys. And so I just when you duplicate an event, the event crew just, you know, um, copies over and so I just have everyone that works as a game day staff on this so that way I'm not inviting new people every time and we've used guest pass once or twice but it's like it's been someone that's been shadowing me or just you know someone that's going to be there for that game only and then I can just send in the guest pass and they have it for that day but typically we've got everyone here um, as a read only like Tony Parks is our on-field MC so he pulls it up on his phone and he can see the on you know he looks for all the on-field promotions and um, he doesn't need to make any edits, so he's only a read-only. So 
we don't use guest pass every day. I just have everyone on a read only on the event crew. That's great. And yeah, just uh, some context on that feature. Uh, guest pass is going to be more for people that are not logged in users, kind of like what uh, Nikki's walking us through right now. Um, Nikki, are you able to swing over to your show and actually just pe uh, see what your same show would look like as a guest pass, though? Um, it's in the upper right corner by the download section, and then you would hit uh, no, it's not that one. Download link there to the right. Yep. Yeah. Then, yep. That one right there. No, that's the activity feed. Side note: We have an activity feed. Um, that we do use guest pass for all of our front yeah. office staff to know what they are, what they need to know for the game. So our community affairs, our corporate partners, they're checking for LEDs, our executive team. So if they want to be somewhere at some time or report to somebody, we use the guest pass. But then we're like Nikki where our crew is on uh, as a user and so they can look for the whole upcoming homestand about what they need to do. That's mainly our camera operators. Yep. But we use guest pass for people who just need to know day of exactly what they're looking for that applies to them and nothing else. Whereas the people that are working the whole game get a better view and a, a view before the game starts. And like I said earlier, so I'm emailing out our game logs after, you know, after the following game for the next game. So I actually just generate a PDF. Jesse, did you lose Nikki? the PDF version and so if they want to look through it and make sure you know if it's a sponsorship element making sure they have all the PAs right or their names are right they just go through the PDF version and so I think we that's what I use mostly more than the guest pass it's just a PDF send it to everyone and then if they say hey this name spelled you know incorrectly here's the right spelling they just email that back to me and I just plug it in the log right then makes sense okay and then uh yeah, just to that end, uh, Nikki, if you just click that little download section where you usually go to download your PDF. So that is where you're going to get, uh, just for anyone who's curious, that's where you would get XLS, CSV, PDF, and then that guest pass is there at the very, very bottom. Um, so yeah, what, what Nikki's doing is downloading the PDF. And out. If anything, Nikki, that would be a cool improvement for maybe next year for you all to take a look at it. Use guest pass yeah. link. That way you don't have to download a PDF, upload mm -hmm. it, and attach it, all that stuff. If you yeah. click just open a new tab right there, Nikki, that will uh, show for us real quick what that guest pass right. experience is like. Um, all right, well, we're kind of coming to the very end here. What, uh, you know, if anybody has any additional questions, I'd love to hear it. Looks like we've got a couple right here. Um, let me see here. How, oh, so one question I'm getting is how many admins can you have and how many overall accounts can you add? So great question. I can answer that one for you, as many as you want. Uh, for sports, we really just don't measure it based on uh, really users. Uh, and so we want, you know, open the floodgates, bring as many users in as you want and as many admins. And then you uh, can control which permissions we have. We kind of have some super admin level permissions. So that's a good answer. Good question there. Um, uh, looks like Nikki already addressed it. So the Rocket had one. Is this the Rocket City Trash? Cool. Rocket City Trash says, where do you go for inspiration um, between Inning at, for in between inning activities, uh, brainstorming or other teams. Yeah, I guess just like Jesse, I'll let you tune in on this. What, where do you guys go for, for inspiration for what to do in between the innings? Yeah, so I'll say that I work with a lot of really creative people, um, and they're really fun to work with, especially our production crew. Uh, we've got some guys upstairs, Alex and Cameron and Matt, that uh, just come in with wild ideas. Uh, we really start off and just think what, even if it's impossible, what would be really fun? And then we kind of pare it down from there. But there are some fun things like Beat the Freeze. That was Scott's idea. And if y'all haven't seen that, it's a lot of fun. Um, we basically have the Freeze, who uh, was an almost Olympic athlete that races fans where they get a head start. And so that was just an idea that he came up with. And we added to it, uh, but he said, you know, it'd be really fun to have a foot race on the field, on the warning track, and uh, yeah. we did it out. So uh, there are a lot of a lot of ways to come up with ideas. Um, I'll say the idea conference. Some of us attend every year, and that's where everyone comes together from sports within our industry and shares ideas and talks about what works and what doesn't work. 
And then we've had a lot of fun just with graphics of tying those in. So like I said, we did a family feud this year and that's really fast paced, uh, a challenge for our staff. Um, but we took just family feud, family feud and, and tied it into a family feud feature, the fast money round. But it's really fun for fans uh, to get involved in. Um, and then I'll say we take some features and adjust them as we go. So um, this year we had a Dunkin' Donuts doppelganger, which is one of our favorites, where we take a fan from the crowd and match them with a celebrity or a famous person. And that has a, a kind of evolved over the years to doppelganger. Um, so it was a stolen identity and stuff like that. It's just fun. Um, but get really good creative people, uh, bring them together and let them bounce off ideas and, and don't put a restriction on what you can and cannot do until you try it. I love that. What about you, Nikki? Where do y'all go to for, for yeah. this kind of uh, Similar to Jesse, we have a very creative team. Um, our marketing department is a little unique. It's just three of us. It's myself, Brady, and then our graphic designer, Phil. Um, kind of the same thing. Just we'll think of something crazy and be like, what's, you know, how can we make this happen? What can we do? And we just brainstorm. Um, Brady and I actually attended the promotional seminar in Des Moines. Um, and got a lot of cool ideas as far as on field and theme nights. But it's a lot of just, um, you know, we'll watch other baseball teams play. We'll watch other, you know, other, you know, we watch the Ellen's Game of Games TV show. And we're like, you know, how can we put that, you know, the blindfolded um, musical chairs into a game? And so it's a lot of just, you know, thinking endless possibilities and how can we make that happen? Yeah. Well, I'll just echo what uh, Nikki was saying. Idea Conference is great uh, if you can attend it. Um, it's literally all about this specific thing, uh, you know, coming up with cool ideas for in-game presentation. And then also, I just got done hanging out with the Golden Knights in Vegas, and they were actually really impressed. They didn't realize it, but um, I guess on DirecTV, um, they're now the NBA channel or whatever it is that's on there. They have a couple channels, is streaming the whole like the whole game, including pregame and halftime and all that stuff. So they were like talking about that. So that, that they're basically buying a subscription for their whole team um, for this season or two and just saying, hey, watch these games for inspiration. Because I think that's it. At the end of the day, it's like you know, we're all doing our own jobs. It's hard to go over to another game and see that. But if you can, you know, I definitely would encourage it. And we love on the show flow and getting to, you know, <laughs> look at y'all's scripts every once in a while and it says the Dunkin' Donut, you know, handstand race or something like that. And you're like, what is that? <laughs> all right well it is 203 and i just want to say again thank you so much to uh jesse and nikki i really appreciate y'all and y'all are definitely leaders in the industry and just appreciate you sharing with us your workflow um and if anyone has any questions again send them our way we can get you guys connected uh directly with nikki and jesse uh if you'd like um and then of course always if this was something of interest to you um feel free to you know go to showflow.tv use a little blue chat we'd love to carry the conversation on with you there but with that Again, air high fives, Nikki, Jesse, great job. Thanks, and guys. I, I Thanks for having us. Yeah, you betcha. Okay, cool. We're going to sign off. Take it easy, everybody. Bye-bye.